Hunters Grove Grade School District 58, Board of Education, Monday, November 26th, 2018 at 7 p.m. at Kingsley School. Immediately following the financial workshop, a school board candidate orientation will take place. Uh, Melissa, please call roll. Member Joshi. Here. Member Harris. Here. Member Hughes. Here. Member Miller. Here. Member Samantha. Here. Member Siegel. Here. Member Purcell. Here. Uh, because we have a, the schedule, the candidate form later in the evening, we will be holding a regular reception of visitors instead of the extended reception of visitors this evening. Please make use of the cards that have been provided on the back table for the convenience of audience members wishing to speak. Uh, the board asks anyone wishing to comment to ask a question or ask a question to sign in and indicate on a card your question or topic to be addressed. This can be placed in the basket next to the table next to Megan uh, and will be used to provide an equal opportunity to everyone wishing to speak and comment and provide us contact information for any follow-up. Uh, tonight we'll start with the workshop okay. with uh, Todd Drayfall. Thank you. We're going to this is a high-level view, kind of talking about where we're at currently, uh, although the board does get a monthly year-to-date report now, shows where things, you know, revenue and expenses are at against budget, um, so we don't go too in-depth into, you know, we're plus minus here or there. Um, overall, we're in good shape, you know, for, for the year so far is where, is where we're tracking uh, comparative to, you know, budget and also comparative to what the average has been over the last three years. So um, what we want to talk about is a little bit about that, where we're at, and then um, some of needs, areas of you know, that we'll be looking at as we work to develop the budget uh, for fiscal year 20, uh, which sort of start essentially started when the board adopted the levy at the last meeting, uh, because that levy is a portion of the 19 budget uh, but it is also a portion of the 20 budget. So that's the first big piece um, for that fiscal year 20 budget. So we'll go on um, and start off at any time we start talking about budgeting and planning and where we're going, uh, we want to remind ourselves of our mission and vision and goals and our strategic plan. And since the board has adopted what was a community uh, developed strategic plan, uh, that really guides uh, what we do and how things will forecast going forward and what what how resources are, are planned and so you know as we have those committees and we'll have a, a meeting for the district leadership team uh, to uh, follow up and see where everyone everyone's at on their committee structures and and, and their their progress tomorrow um, you know, we keep these things in mind for the, you know, going forward as we, as we start our allocation of our resources. Fiscal year 19, we have an operating budget of $66.6 .6 million of revenue and expenditures of 65, uh, or just under $66 million. Uh, that is a projected revenue over expenditure of $700,000. And whereas that sounds like a really, ex a lot of money, uh, comparative to the total budget and total expenses um, it is it is a very small amount and we have to remember that we do base our revenue on projections and expectations of things come in we have been very fortunate that the district does receive um, its estimates of revenue and you know what what we estimate and use for revenue uh, we usually may meet those and those come in at, at, at a time uh, when we need them um, but the state reimbursements always are, they're not only a year in, um, in, in arrears, so state funding comes, for particularly special ed, transportation, a year after we've spent them, if we're lucky. Uh, we should get four payments in a year. We normally get three. Um, sometimes we get the one from the prior year. Uh, I think we're still missing one from last year. So they're 18 months or better in arrears at times. So um, we project that and plan for that just to understand our structure of expense versus revenue and how, how those things flow. So right now, as I said, we are expecting things to come in. Um, where we're trending right now, and we don't see anything that's jumping 
trend where we'll be we should be coming in um, as expected with budget. There is a shift in that. Um, just as a reminder, you know, we we started the year without a contract for both for two of our bargaining units. The main one is the certified staff, and then also with custodians. Um, salaries lag a bit because we recalculated once those were settled to pay out for the remainder of the year so there's going to be a short lag it's not a huge amount but there is a bit of a lag into that rev into that, that that structure of that expense this is the table we use um, and I'm going to show you the graphical piece so don't have to worry too much about this um, but it's a table we have uh, I believe in the budget presentation and so forth it has a beginning balance um, up there expense and revenue and then any balance and I just I want to point out there's we'll go back and forth on a couple of things but we have the ending balance right now for ed, ed fund is eight and a half million dollars um, by the way these are pre-audit numbers um, we, we have the audit once we get the audit finalized those will make some adjustments there will be some adjustments to those because it's this is on cash this is what on cash we show as of June 30th well, there's gonna be some adjustments of revenue and expenses that came in and after um, as well as some adjustments you know in the audit and we'll go through those when we get them but essentially in the ed fund we have about eight and a half we end with about eight and a half million dollars it's actually a little bit less than we start out with uh, because we have some transfer of payments uh, debt payments come out of the debt service fund and so there are certain things that we're making a transfer because they're covering yeah we're using educational pieces to cover out of it. that's just the legal aspect of how the budget is supposed to flow under under the guidelines of the state this is the graphical representation it makes it a little easier for us to follow we have a beginning balance there our revenue and expense and our ending balance the piece I want to point out <coughs> as you can see we even talk you know we are even and we have a working cash piece that we do borrow from uh, in the time of the year when funds are limited when revenue we receive our last set of property taxes in the last 30 some odd days 40 days of the school year uh, and of the fiscal year so when you think about that and that's why we have the next graph half of this bar doesn't come in until start to come in until May 15th so when we take we have to anticipate half of this bar which is about 23 million dollars 22 million dollars and we go back and we look at our beginning fund balance in the ed fund of eight and a half and our fund balance of the working cash of nine nine point eight it's about eighteen million dollars so that's eighteen million dollars we have available in fund balance to cover waiting for that second half and I know that previous business uh, uh, business managers talked about the fact that you know the cash flow is a is an important piece and it is a tight piece for us when we get into the end of the year that's why we talk about we're seven hundred thousand dollars under uh, you know revenue over expense um, we really need to continue that structure moving forward as expenses increase fund balance also needs to keep pace with that so that we can continually pay the bills with the funds on hand while we're waiting for that last um, piece as long as property taxes are 80 percent of the funding for the district and as long as that 50 percent comes in at the end this will always be a concern and a piece that we'll have to maintain and, and monitor so is you know we get talking about resources and, and things that is one piece of that puzzle that will also have to be in there so um, but we want to show you know how those how those all structures those those work so um, projected going forward uh, as I said 83 percent of our revenue comes from uh, property taxes we are projecting a good 
3.1 percent increase uh, for from 19 to 20. We have gotten some new property numbers in that could put us into the 28 to 29 million dollar. I don't I don't know how much from the initial number that I see to the final how much some of that gets adjusted through the county uh, just from not having any notes or any you know or having the experience but we're looking at about a 30 million dollars in new property coming in uh, this year uh, which is takes it go I don't think the district's received that much in the year since 2007 um, but that's a considerable amount of new construction coming in for first time um, and a considerable amount of growth so that you know and then what we project for the following year um, for that half because remember we only get you know half of that comes in for this fiscal year the other half goes into the next fiscal year so looking at all of that we're looking at about three percent we are going to be using a projection for state revenue of one to two percent um, that's not a huge number uh, from the state aid piece just to understand we got a three percent bump uh, this year that was about hundred and five thousand dollars so we talk about you know three or four or five percent increase in state aid um, hundred thousand dollars is important um, we always watch for all the all the dollars we can get but it, it, it doesn't move when we start talking about large program pieces and what that will do for impacting going forward so um, but those will be the numbers that we're looking at um, the other piece just as an understanding um, when the state changed to evidence-based funding model it's a good fund there was an increase there are uh, five categoricals that we don't have to wait for payments because they are now into that 24 pay period uh, and there was significant increases in in revenues coming to all the districts the other, the only issue is the problem is we have no idea how to estimate what we where we will be at when the funding comes down um, we are not a tier one school um, which is you know predominantly funded by by state revenues uh, and we're not a tier two school so it's kind of whatever is left after those tiers get settled is to what where we end up with um, and this year was a hundred and some odd thousand dollars and next year we we're, we don't know that was when the state put 350 million dollars new into the formula from the prior year tier two for funding and finances in the state of Illinois is very different from the tier one and tier two three and four that we talk about for school report card purposes true it might have been helpful had they used different language <laughs> um, but they didn't <laughs> and so we always just want to clarify that um, what what they calculate for funding and resources is very different from what they calculate for school report card achievement growth um, tiers thank you yes you're right mm -hmm. It still is a guarantee, though, that we get the same revenue as we got the previous year. We won't year, get correct? yeah, yes, okay. yes. And I don't see that we won't get some increase each year. I think that's going to be their goal. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the conversations I, you know, listened to the last last weekend uh, at the conference was, you know, three hundred fifty million dollars is wonderful to put in, but to fully fund the model, that's they need to get into the 600 million a year or more um, pretty quick to fund that that structure I don't know how they plan to do that um, maybe we'll maybe we'll know in the state of the state budget address in January or February but um, <laughs> but that that's that's where it's at so um, and, and we'll continue with that projection until until we have other information so going and switching into resources that we're looking at that we um, need that have priority that have uh, concerns and what things are coming uh, that administrative is looking at um, at this point again this is a very early piece and we talk we're very high level uh, at this presentation um, right now we have our enrollment projections and we don't see huge increases overall from a district standpoint so looking at classroom positions 
doesn't look like there's a huge add or adjust. You know, there may be adjustments building to building, but you know, overall, um, our our demographer doesn't see 400 new students showing up. Um, yeah. <coughs> sorry, uh, I need to be careful how I say things. Uh, 400, yeah, you know, or, or you know, multiple new students coming in that would require um, increased staffing structure. There are the needs that have been talked about and in, in, in about other areas of support, uh, and that's estimated uh, five FTEs. Um, you're going to see some things on the next few slides, and that that are, you know, big tick, you know, things that we always want to look at that we keep on the list. Again, going back to that strategic plan of focus of what we can do and how we can allocate resources and what are the priorities. Uh, and things that we will bring to you down the road through a process. Uh, so, I, I, you know, support staffing uh, of estimated five additional FTEs in, in areas. Uh, also, just as a, a footnote to, you know, looking at what our retirement schedules and structures are, you know, we have a cycle coming. It's not significant numbers, and it really doesn't hit until 21 and 22, where we have 12 and, and 8, uh, where we have an adjustment. Um, obviously, these things are were known and are known that we've adjusted to, and as part of the negotiations with the contract, as to how you know things are are covered within that piece and support. So, so if I could, if I could just add for the board's benefit and also for those who are visiting with us tonight, um, it, what happens as we start to build the budget is we start to really evaluate those priorities and in, in what the budget might allow for in terms of additional staff. Um, we know where some of those priorities. Um, areas where they exist right now um, those needs exist but we'll be doing that evaluation the other group that right now is really looking at that as part of the strategic plan is that resources review council and that group has met um, a couple of times already and will continue to meet um, typically over winter break in through January and February we really start to to build out staffing um, on a again a high level for the upcoming year so those are those are estimates right now <clears throat> uh, yeah, I took Jane's pro, but if you need yeah. to jump in, just go ahead. <laughs> uh, curriculum instruction, uh, continuing on with the pattern and, and what's being developed. Um, we have things coming in and assume for expenditures of, of the final payment for benchmark, um, science resource allocation and in, in in fall of 19, which would be fiscal year 20 budget, so that would be in the 20 budget, uh, and then continue with purchasing math and, and social science studies. There will be, and we're build, we'll, we will work on models that we develop a plan and a model piece that we put into a, a you know three and five year models, both on budget, curriculum, staffing, professional development, and all of those things. As to as well as technology, you know, in time, so that each year you're going to see those those trend lines coming in as to what pieces get placed in there. It does make discretionary pieces a little bit more thinner, but it's it's how we allocate and make sure there's a continual development um, and progression on you know curriculum implementation and updating, as well as technology, as well as a professional development piece that covers all of those things. Um, and making sure that those, you know, are within the budget constraint, the budget projections and models that we have, um, so that we can maintain, sustain programs as they are, um, you know, uh, you know, according to all of that we've been working on. So, uh, grade level meetings and curriculum, obviously, professional learning pieces, and there'll be pieces to this that uh, we have availability of Title II funding. Um, that we will utilize uh, that is federal money uh, specifically that is very scripted as to how it can be spent it can be used for professional development so we're able to get those into that grant funding and structure um, we will maximize that those uses over a, a multi-year period so that we can uh, afford those professional developments for the staff for those new 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 updates Yes. I know that that's being piloted right now. How do we adjust for the way the pilot potentially goes to account for those dollars and 
Does that mean that if the pilot doesn't go well, do we end up uh, having freed up dollars to use for other reasons? <coughs> well, I think, go ahead. That's yours. <laughs> At this point, we've secured initial ballpark quotes from all of the members that we're working with. And so that helps us to have an idea of where we might be with any of the, the choices the committee might recommend. In the event that, that I know it was alluded to in the curriculum workshop, in the event that all of the resources were deemed unworthy by the committee, which we're not anticipating, but were that to be the case, then I think what we would do is, is accelerate the process to find worthy resources. So I, I wouldn't count on I wouldn't count on those dollars not being spent. I would, let's make it a positive. I would expect to see those dollars spent on science resources going into next year. Mm -hmm. Pending the committee work, to be sure. But I, but I think that there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a shared sense of urgency by the committee to make a quality decision, but also to make sure that we have materials in teachers' hands that they're good for them. How many, how many curriculum are you piloting? There are two resources being piloted at K-5 and two at 6 -8. Cost difference between A versus B and K5 and A versus B and 6A is not significant enough for us to skew one or the other based on cost? At, at, at this point, that's true. We haven't, like I said, because we, we don't have even early response from the committee yet, we haven't entered into any real negotiations with the vendors. It's simply to get an idea of are we in a, a similar ballpark with each, and, and it appears that we are. I would add we wouldn't um, we want to stay true to that process and honor the committee's work as well so at this point we wouldn't skew one way or the other based on cost alone that really is going to be a recommendation that's going to come through the committee of the very best resources these are resources that in in all likelihood we would um, hope to use for the next seven to ten years depending on uh, the curriculum council's recommendation in terms of refreshing um, so we don't want to shortchange ourselves for a, a little bit cheaper product right now we really want to make sure that we're honoring the recommendation that's coming forward we anticipate to have come forward from that committee well, yeah, and, and to that point the first moment we've actually looked at the costs of the resources was in the past month everything leading up to now we haven't even done that exploration because we wanted to make sure we were focused on the problem mm -hmm. Technology we have uh, on the list for uh, the next year is, is the faculty devices are getting to be five, six years old plus, so you know, those are now have to be in the cycle, as well as um, Chromebooks. There's a series of Chromebooks that are getting to the point end of their service life. So uh, you know when things start to be more problem than the worth, obviously there's a schedule and so forth to, to utilize those and move through. So those are also pieces that will be into and, and looking at for the you know 2020 budget <clears throat> and then we have um, this list I meant to look up the value on this list this list is a, a it's significantly over what we have available um, but this is the priority list of items um, that we have a uh, capital list that was developed in the last several years uh, that need to be you know that need to be looked at and addressed there was a, a, a large list obviously some of those things were planned the the, the addition um, was put on at Leicester and then there were some available that came in well, uh, under plan so we we're able to bid out some of the other work so the other items that were priorities got bid out and were done last summer. Um, we gave a report last month that we came in under budget, you know, under expectations, and we have a couple hundred thousand dollars in bond proceeds in the capital fund available. Uh, so what we will do is go through this list as well as look at if there's anything else that has come to become a priority. Un you know, lists are good, priori prioritization are good, you also need to go back and make sure something didn't jump up all of a sudden. Uh, we had a heat heating pump or heating um, pipe. pipe. Was that here? Mm -hmm. That was here. A heating pipe here that was replaced over uh, Thanksgiving. So you know those things pop up. Now, obviously, it didn't rise to a even a bid or anything like that. But you know, looking to see what items may jump up, and then we'll look and bring those forward um, down the road as to you know what we could do with some as we have new information um, you know CPI will be known in end of January 
as to what that number will be for the second half of revenue. Uh, that's edging to be about 2.5 right now uh, percent for the CPI. So also projections and enrollments and, and so forth get, get cleaner and, and so forth. So uh, that's, that's kind of our, our structure and our timeline for the calendar. And, you know, so this is the second step if the levy was the first. And then we keep going through the process. So with that, I kept it in the 20 minutes. 29, 29 minutes. 30 <laughs> minutes. Good job. Um, Small question, Todd. Mm -hmm. um, you just said uh, that CPI is projected to be in the neighborhood of 2.5. On an earlier slide, there's a projected increase of 3.1%. Is that because of new construction? That's that's new construction, but also it's the 2.5 is on top of the 2.1 and whatever new construction from the prior year, and the 3.1. It's because the levy years. Levies okay. years are split between the fiscal year. Okay, that makes sense. So it's the 18 levy and the 19 levy that pay for it for the fiscal year 20, right. and the 16 and 17 levy that paid for 19. Thank you. So it's a differential between 16 and the 19. <laughs> Can you refresh my memory? I'm trying to think of some good news that. Uh, at the future, when does that first downtown, and John may know too, when's the first TIF come off? Should be in, in two or three, yeah. It's got, I mean, it seems like it's always been a long time away, but it's got to be getting close. Three years. 96. And it has another $6 million of new property coming on. This, I mean, we don't get access to, but there's $6 million of new construction in one of those down in Downers TIFs uh, coming online for this, this year. <laughs> we, we will not get it. Um, right, but that's but somewhere in the 60 to $70 million range, I believe, right now is the incremental In what in year, it. though, does the first one come off? I think it's about three years from now. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have two TIFs in the district. The downtown TIF is the largest. And then we have a portion of Oak Brook TIF. You're asking yourself why Oak Brook has a TIF. I don't know. Um, the but there is a small state. portion of Oak Brook that is within a tax increment financing district, which means that development couldn't happen except for some type of financing. Um, and so, but that one is not going to come off for quite some time. Right. In Ogden, we had a deal with Ogden. We did some of that increment, right? We, it's not like the downtown one where we didn't get any of the increment? But that I'm not. I think you're thinking of the Project Altitude Rexnord development, no. maybe? Ogden. I know what you're talking about. There I was a deal, deal with the car dealership. Yeah. Fight over that one. <laughs> so that's why it sticks in my mind that there was. Ogden's got a TIF along Ogden, too. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. between the one in downtown and Oak Brook. Yeah, mm -hmm. I haven't. I mean, because, they're not expi because they're not expiring this year, I haven't gotten too much into. Yeah. I just knew. I mean, I looked up the downtown one because obviously that's a huge number. And it is coming to its end of time. So. Right. How does that work? Do they have the option to? The, uh, to, yes, tax increment financial districts go for 23 years. Um, at that point, if a community wishes it to be extended, they must go to the General Assembly. To go to the General Assembly, they must have approval of all of the taxing bodies to extend the TIF. Um, that is the really, I mean, you can object, any taxing body can object to a TIF at its creation. It simply means the village must approve it by a two-thirds or a supermajority vote. It still can create the TIF. Um, only when extension is really talked about is when um, the other units of government have power to talk about options and abilities, if at all, if you know if they're going to allow for it to extend. Uh, it has to be a reason. Mm -hmm. It has to be a reason for it to extend? Right. Like they didn't, they weren't able to pay off the original bonds, and currently there's a surplus in the TIF. So unless something falls apart in three years, there shouldn't be even a reason to extend. And and if they wanted to um, substantially alter the TIF area or reconstitute it in a different way, they, right? They would have to. Yeah, they could. Yeah, but that's if right. there's bonds to it, it gets a little more complicated. Um, and just so people not. What's well, a possibility that we get uh, more revenue in when the TIF falls off? 
yeah, I mean, yes. I think that at that point, it, it, when Assuming it comes, it when it's right. going to dissolve, when it comes to end to fruition, um, then whatever happens, something's going to happen that will benefit all of the taxing bodies, right. um, us certainly included in that piece, whatever case may come, whether it's readjustment of something or whatever. Um, I just bring it up as you're doing longer term projections, yes, and no, we're talking about we're talking about new um, uh, potentially new employees and, right. and new curriculum over the next few years. That's certainly something to it, yes, consider. and it's when it, and, and yes, uh, for those ta tax increment finance districts hide the value as it grows from all the other taxing bodies. So if it's an empty land, and it was valued at a hundred dollars, and now is worth ten million. Um, for the school district, it sets its rate against the hundred dollars, even though it's worth a lot more. The differential between that is money that goes back into what's called the tax increment, increment financing district, that is spent for the benefit development of the district. It could be bonds, it could be restructuring, it could be money back to the developer to actually do the project any number of things. Um, there are a variety of pieces that happen. When the TIF dissolves, then all of that differential becomes new construction, and the district is allowed to, to levy and access those those funds for, you know, and, and raise its revenue stream um, at that point. And you have to do it when that happens, or you risk losing it forever. Uh, so it's a very important piece to make sure, and we definitely will be over the 5% the taxation level at that point because we'll we'll be looking at a, a significant increase so okay not to sidetrack this year just thought for the benefit no of no everybody. that's and, and it will be something that'll be out there it, it is now within a it is because when we do projection windows to look and see where that line goes um, it's now within our planning window uh, that at least the downtown one is so it needs to be in there and and what, what, what will happen with that, so. Any other questions? Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, next on the agenda is the reception of visitors. This will be a regular reception of visitors and is not intended to be a time for members of the public to enter into a dialogue with the board. Issues raised during public participation may be added to future agendas or addressed by administrative staff as appropriate. Criticism of individuals is not in order. We ask that everyone be respectful of time limits, be respectful of others, and otherwise abide by board policy. Anyone wishing to address the board is asked to state your name, school attendance area, and speak as briefly as possible. Well, you'll get it back. <laughs> Here's an extra tip. Looks like we have uh, one visitor who would like to. Okay. Can I fill out an answer? I thought. Sure. Actually, I don't even know. Hi, Rich Ashen. How you doing? Pucker. So I can't, I can't remember who said about the curriculum, seven to ten years, a new curriculum possibly using it for oh. I think I referenced that so yeah so quickly I just I know this is not a back and forth at all but I just want to please board listen to this as far as seven ten years part of the reason why we're doing this as far as some of the curriculum stuff you, you heard at the last board meeting because the curriculum hasn't changed for such a long time so I think that 17 years is a prolonged time and I don't know if you're just talking general but uh, I, I would probably have to say that's much shorter and then I'm just kind of concerned as far as um, there was kind of back and talk as far as you know the curriculum. I don't understand that they're still working through the process, but I didn't see kind of like a set aside budget for next year. I, I mean, as far as the numbers go, like is there a, a, some sort of endpoint like cap to how much is going to be spent next year on curriculum? And um, bottom line is this: it, it all goes back to curriculum. A lot of money is going to go into it because everything is going to have to go uh, be replaced at the same time, almost or two or three years. So if you keep on having an idea that it's going to last seven to ten years, you're going to keep on having this problem. Whether you're here as a board, but I'll tell you one thing: I'm going to be here, and my students, are to, my kids are going to be here. So I don't want that problem to happen again. So thank you very much. Think about that. Thank you. Anyone else? I just have sure. a general question: Is there going to be? An Can you just state for the record? Oh, name Tracy of the Minor Puffer. Is there going to be an extended reception of visitors to make up for today? 
or like if, if people didn't come because they knew there wasn't going to be a back and forth because we only have so many times that we get to talk to you, right. is there going to be one at another board meeting? or? Is we can look at it. It probably won't happen at a regular board meeting, but we can potentially add it at another time. Because we'll I see. know that there was people yeah. that were going to come, but they didn't because they knew there was no back and forth. Right. Thank so you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Th thank you. Um, at this time, we'll take a brief recess, a five-minute recess, and the board invites potential uh, board candidates to take a seat at the table, or we'll move another table up here. Um, is there, um, and we'll, um, that's it. So we'll just take a brief recess and come back in five minutes. Everybody knows each other. Doug Purcell. Melissa Jervis. John Miller. Darren Hughes. Tracy Weiner. Jill Salanti. Carrie Blackham. Kira Toshi. Carrie Kermis Foley. Steve Holcher. Greg Harris. Emily Hammonds. Elizabeth Siegel. Rich Stashen. Okay. Uh, so everybody has uh, a folder in front of them, which you don't have to go through now, but just take it home. It's the annual report and then also some uh, resources uh, and some of it's for the IESB. Um, just something to look through on your own. Um, I thought well, this is the same form that we did um, a couple years ago, and we can uh, probably many of you. Pr I would think that a lot of the questions turn out to be the same. We'll be together or have conversations about the school board together. So that's the difference. You can't have time. you can have five board members as long as they're not talking school business. Yes, right, because that would be a violation in yeah, theory. Uh, members of the public okay. would say that <laughs> talking about school board business and that would be a violation of the Open Meetings Act. Um, because it's the majority of a quorum. Yeah. So right. a quorum is four. If there were four if you had a meeting and three members were there and you had four people, four board members, and those three who were talking happened to have happen to be there, they could they could make it they could make any decision they wanted to and in, in, in furtherance of, of district agenda. Right. So the board members can discuss things privately, uh, together, one on one, but we can't have a meeting away from the public, uh, the public forum. Um, then para, which is was put together by the IASB, and that's a, I think it's a written, right? It's a guideline, a written book of uh, guidelines for school boards. The IASB is the another acronym, the Illinois Association of School Boards. And they uh, give us guidelines as to what we can and can't do, what we should and shouldn't do. Uh, they helped us most recently last year with uh, redoing the superintendent evaluation. Um, and we have, we have a meeting with them in a couple of weeks, um, a workshop with them. So they'll go over and talk about how we handle certain things, rules that we uh, need to tighten up or um, policies, uh, different different things like that. So para is a, is a is a large document that we can all refer to if we like. Um, para also governs um, staff evaluations, teacher evaluations. Thank and you. So um, you all will take uh, board members take a training in order to follow those guidelines in ripping teachers or taking other action against teachers. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, that is that I don't know if that will be later in the agenda or not, but that is one thing that when you become a board member, there is uh, something we have to do with um, the IASB to uh, make sure that we know and follow all the rules. Some of those things can be done online, and some of those things can be done via an IASB seminar, which they I think they have them a few times a year. I think after the election, is the one every year in DeKalb, Carrie? Um, is the one every year in DeKalb? After they have a the couple election? of locations right after. Yeah, yeah. DeKalb was one. Is there DeKalb, yeah. there's one in Naperville or something. We did it in DeKalb. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you were there at Naperville. Yeah. Right. And you, since the new members just did it, well, how was it? A it was a one day. It was two days. Um, the majority of your required stuff is in day one, um, but both days are very very useful. And I, anybody who does end up on the board. Doing it in the the room with a lot of people, I got to say, I learned as much from discussion that happened in that room um, than I did also from the people presenting, as well as uh, 
uh, some of the districts, if they had a lot of new board members or whatever, sometimes the board president or their superintendent came along. So sometimes you had some veteran people in the room that it was really nice to kind of hear what was going on in their districts and challenges that they had and stuff like that. It, it really gave me uh, a, personally a lot of perspective um, when we were seated. So that was nice. Okay. And, that, and we have so long to do that. Um, there is a time frame after the election or after you're seated. Yeah. A, a few months. Yeah. Is that what it is? I thought it was two or three months to do it either online or on the program. Um, so regarding the election this year, there's uh, four seats that are up for election. Um, the election is April 2nd. Uh, of those four seats, three of them are four-year terms and one of them is a two-year term, um, which is unusual, but because Member Doshi uh, replaced someone who was on the board, uh, he took over the remainder of her term, and um, now there'll be four, and then the next election there'll be three, and we'll be back on four-year no, terms. No, next year be four there'll again. Be four. Be four. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, four, four again, you're right, because that's two. Right, yeah. I'm sorry. He's, he's like, best um, seat is has to miss a run in April to finish Beth's turn for the last right. time. Right. Thank you for correcting that. So uh, there'll be four again in the following election. Um, campaigning for school board. Sorry, just one thing, because sure, it got go cut out of the agenda, at least online. Uh, the date for the reorganization meeting hasn't been set yet, but it will most likely be either April 8th, which would be a regular board meeting, or April 22nd, which would be the school board budget workshop. But that'll be something the board will decide as it gets closer. But right now, I notice it's just parentheses, and that's, that's why it's there. Um, whether there's time to, to see the new board six days later, I don't know, but definitely. But prior to the following May board meeting, for sure, the, the idea would be those board meet, new board members are sworn in, and then there's the reorganization is determining committee positions, and then the board leaders. Extension is really talked about is when um, the other units of government have power to talk about options and abilities, if at all, if the other are going to vote a lot more to extend. That would be a reason. That would be a reason for it to extend? Right. Like they didn't they weren't able to pay off the original bonds. Currently, there's a surplus in those if so. Unless something falls apart, it's reduced. Right, they would have to. Yeah, they can. But that's if there's bonds to it, it gets a little more complicated. Um, just so people know, what's a possibility that we get uh, more revenue than the difference? Yeah, I mean, I think that at that point, it, it, when it comes, when it's going to dissolve, when it comes to end to fruition, um, then. Whatever happens, something's going to happen that will benefit all of the taxing bodies. Um, us certainly included in that piece. Whatever case may come, whether it's readjustment of something or whatever. Um, I just bring it up as you're doing longer term. Right? Yes, yeah, no, we're talking about we're talking about new uh, potentially new employees and right. new curriculum over the next few years. That's really something to it, yes, and it's when, and, 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 yes. Uh, for those tax and corporate finance districts, hide the value as it grows from all the other taxing bodies. So if it's an empty land and it was valued at a hundred dollars and now is worth ten million um, for the school district, it sets its rate against the hundred dollars, even though it's worth a lot more. The differential between that money that goes back into what's called a tax increment financing district that is spent for the benefit and development of the district. It could be bonds, it could be restructuring, it could be money back to the developer to actually do the project, any number of things. Um, there are a variety of pieces that happen. When the TIF dissolves, then all of that differential becomes new construction and the district is allowed to, to levy and access those, those funds 
for you know and, and raise its revenue stream um, at that point and you have to do it when that happens or you risk losing it forever uh, so it's a very important piece to make sure and we definitely will be over the five percent through the taxation level at that point because we'll, we'll be looking at a so Okay. That's Cedric this year, just not for the benefit. No, no, that's, and it will be, <laughs> it is now within a, it, it is because when we do projection windows to look and see where that line goes, um, it's not within our planning window. Uh, that, at least the downtown one is. So it needs to be in there. And, so. is the reception of visitors. This will be a regular reception of visitors and is not intended to be a time for members of the public to enter into dialogue with the board. Issues raised during public participation may be added to future agendas or addressed by administrative staff as appropriate. Criticism of individuals is not in order. We ask that everyone be respectful of time limits, be respectful of others, and otherwise abide by board policy. And when wishing to address the board is asked to state your name, school attendance area, and students Looks like we have uh, one visitor who would like to. Okay. Sure. Yeah. 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 Hi, Rich Ashen. How are you doing? Buffer. So I can't remember who said about the curriculum. Seven to ten years a new curriculum. Possibly using it for. Oh. I think I referenced that. So yeah. So quickly, I just I know this is not back and forth at all, but I just want to. Please, board, listen to this as far as seven to ten years. Part of the reason why we're doing this, as far as some of the curriculum stuff you, you heard at the last board meeting, because the curriculum hasn't changed for such a long time. So I think that seven to ten years is a prolonged time. And I don't know if you're just talking general, but uh, I, I would probably have to say that's much shorter. And then I'm just kind of concerned as far as um, there was kind of back and talk as far as you know the curriculum. I don't understand that they're still working through the process, but. I didn't see kind of like a set aside budget for next year. It, I mean, as far as the numbers go, like is there a, a, some sort of end point, like cap to how much is going to be spent next year on curriculum? And um, bottom line is this: it, it all goes back to curriculum. A lot of money is going to go into it because everything is going to have to go uh, be replaced at the same time, almost or two or three years. So if you keep on having an idea that it's going to last seven to ten years, you're going to keep on having this problem. Whether you're here as a board, but I'll tell you one thing: I'm going to be here. And my students and my kids are going to be here, so I don't want that problem to happen again. So, thank you very much. Think about that. Thank you. I just have a general question: Is there going to be an Can you extended? Just state for the record. Oh, uh, Tracy Weiner Puffer. Is there going to be an extended perception of visitors to make up for today? For like, if if people didn't come because they knew there wasn't going to be a back and forth, because we only have so many times that we get to talk to you, right. is there going to be one at another board meeting, or is it we can look at it. It probably won't happen at a regular board meeting, but we can potentially have it at another time. Because we'll I know that there was people yeah. that were going to come, but didn't because they knew there was no back and forth. Right. Thank what you. it's worth. Thank you. Um, at this time, we'll take a brief recess, a five-minute recess, and the board invites potential uh, board candidates to take a seat at the table, or we'll move another table up here. Um, is there, um, and we'll, uh, that's it. So we'll just take a brief recess, and we'll come back in five minutes. Carrie Blanca. Kira Toshi. Carrie Kermis-Roman. Steve Holcher. Greg Harrison. Emily Gannis. Elizabeth Siegel. Rich Stash. Okay. Uh, so, everybody has uh, a folder in front of them, which you don't have to go through now, but just take it home. It's the annual report and then also some uh, resources uh, and some bits from the IESB. Um, just something to look through on your own. Um, um, this is the same form that we did um, a couple of years ago, and we can probably 
many of you, I would think a lot of the questions turn out to be the same when I talk to people who ask me about the board. A lot of it is about time commitments and what um, you to do. So, Board is governed by federal state and local laws, and then we have the Texas Meeting Act, which uh, precludes us from meeting anywhere but in public um, unless we are in closed session. There's a few reasons to go to closed session. Many of those you've heard from board meetings are litigation or uh, regarding employee contract negotiations, things like that. But in everything else should be done in a public forum, which, which also means with that Open Meetings Act that three board members can't be together or have conversations about the school board together. So, yeah, five board members. Yes, right, because that would be a violation in theory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, members of the public would okay. say that <laughs> talking about school board business, and that would be a violation of the Open Meetings Act. Um, because it's the majority of a forum. Yeah, so right. a forum is four. If there were four, if you had a meeting and three members were there, and you had four people, four board members, and those three who were talking happened to have happened to be there, they could they could make they could make any decision they wanted to in, in, in terms of, of decision. Right. So the board members can discuss things privately uh, together one on one, but we can't have a meeting away from. Then PARA, which is, is put together by the IASB, and that's all. Uh, I think it's a written, right? It's a guideline, a written book of uh, guidelines for school boards. The IASB is the, another acronym, the Illinois Association of School Boards, and they uh, give us guidelines as to what we can and can't do, what we should and shouldn't do. Uh, they helped us most recently last year with uh, redoing the superintendent evaluation. Um, and we have, we have a meeting with them in a couple of weeks, um, a workshop with them. So they'll go over and talk about how to handle certain things, rules that we need uh, to tighten up, or uh, policies, uh, different things like that. So PARA is, is, a, is a large document that we can all refer to. Board members take a training in order to follow those guidelines in writing teachers are taking other action against teachers. Thank you. Um, that is, that, I don't know if that would be later in the agenda or not, but that is one thing that when you become a board member, there is uh, something we have to do with um, the IASB to uh, make sure that we know and follow the rules. Some of those things can be done online, and some of those things can be done via an IASB seminar. They, I think they have them a few times a year. I think after the election, is the one every year in DeKalb, Carrie? I'm sorry? Is the one every year in DeKalb? They have a couple of locations training. right after. Yeah, yeah. DeKalb was one. They had a lot of our carpet. We did it in DeKalb. We did it in DeKalb. Yeah. 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 Naperville at the uh, yeah, Northern. Yeah. Right. And you since the new members just did it, well, how was it? A, it was a one day? It was, it was two, two days. days. The Friday and um, Saturday. The majority of your required stuff is in day one. Um, but both days are very, very useful. And I, anybody who does end up on the board doing it in the, the room with a lot of people, I gotta say, I learned as much from discussion that happened in that room um, than I did also from the people presenting, as well as uh, uh, some of the districts, if they had a lot of new board members or whatever, sometimes the board president or their superintendent came along. So sometimes you had some veteran people in the room that it was really nice to kind of hear what was going on in their districts. and challenges that they had and stuff like that. It, it really gave me, uh, a, personally, a lot of perspective um, when we received it. So, that's nice. And then we have so long to do that. Um, there is a time frame after the election or after you receive it. A few months. I thought it was two or three months to do it either online or on the program. Um, so regarding the election this year, there's uh, 
four seats that are up for election. Um, the election is April 2nd. Uh, of those four seats, three of them are four year terms, and one of them is a two year term, um, which is unusual, but because Member Doshi uh, replaced someone who was on the board, uh, he took over the remainder of her term, and uh, now there'll be four, and then the next election, back up no, 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 oh sorry four again you're right because that's two mm -hmm. right I'm sorry he's, he's like best um seat is as well as one and able to finish back in turn for the last right years. thank you for correcting that so that'll be four again the following election um campaigning for school board sorry just one thing because it got cut out of the agenda at least online uh the date for the real petition meeting happened Set yet, but it will most likely be either April 8th, which would be a regular board meeting, or April 22nd, which would be the school board workshop. But that was in the formal design because it's closer. But right now, I know it's just in parentheses. That's why it's there. Um, whether there's time to do something more six days later, I don't know, but definitely so prior to the following May board meeting for sure. Yeah, you'll be those board meet, new board members are sworn in, and then. There's the reorganization is determining committee positions and then the board leadership and then a lot of those conversations happen there. Thank you. Um, campaigning for the school board, I'll let some of the members discuss this. This is a positive thing. I just want to make sure um, I'm trying to make sure it's clear. Um, what we're talking about the different seats being open. Does everybody understand that, that three of the seats are four year terms? Yeah. And one seat is a two year term. So you can you have a choice of, of being in either election, but you can't be in both. You gotta pick one. 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 Any comments on the campaigning or what it was like in the last? Don't go to the train station. <laughs> <laughs> um, True. Right. Thank you very much. Well, depending on how many people are running, if it's a fairly contested race, uh, there ended up being a couple forums because that was nice. Contested race. So, mm -hmm. so we did two of them. Um, one was well attended, one was not, because one was on Valentine's Day. Um, so that one was that one well attended or not? That was the one that was not well attended. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it was that it was thing. There we was, had one at, at the well. Yeah. Well. They did. So there's a third Oh, one. and the, and then, and the of what, there were four, because we had the smaller PTA meeting at Bel Air. Oh, that's right. So we had but, four. But that was, you were invited there, weren't you? Yeah, but yeah, so but you I to visit. Right. That wasn't really a forum. But like, yeah, and then the League of Women Voters did one where they had like, it was more of a, um, like a room where you had a table set up. 99 and 58 and Every day was, and, yeah. Right. Um, so that, that was really nice to be a part of because it's it's your one opportunity to kind of to actually engage with people that might be interested in, in voting. So um, if those come up, definitely take part in them. So that was good. Um, I know it was challenging sometimes on the dates to make them, but those I rearranged for and made sure I could, I could be there. So it's depending on what things look like, those may come up and, and those are valuable. Next would be general expectations. Being a school member, general expectations. Uh, we were, is this what we are talking about? The timing? The timing? Okay. Uh, I mean, there are 20 different meetings. Just to Can I just quick with sure. the petitions that are due in December? <laughs> the earlier you turn in your things is how you are lined up on the ballot. So there's a ridiculous number of people there before the doors open at 8 o'clock. So you just kind of have to, if that's super important to you, there's lots of studies that say if you're at the top, you're going to win because you have this many. Yeah, but it's ours... It's a lottery. Right. Because anybody who's there before 8 o'clock gets... You're, you're, like, there was three of us get processed yeah. in the first hour. Then they did do a cutoff or whatever. So there were three of us, they did a lottery. And then I was at the bottom of the ballot and I came in second by point three percent. So <laughs> you can also go in at eleven o'clock. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> so, but just so that you know, if you all go at eight, 
So, so, who, so yeah, the three of us who were one, two, and three, one. it was, um, and they just drew names, they, they gave everybody a, a letter, and then they just drew names, numbers out of like, out of the, the A's, yeah. the B's were, went first, and the A's. And I had, because I had to do the same thing for people that come in the last hour. Right, yeah, because if you come in at 5 o'clock on Friday, they do the same thing. Right. Just FYI. So it'll probably be worthwhile. Right. Uh, super early if they're taking the first hour uh, within, a, within a time frame. You gotta be in line by a. Yeah, as long as you're in line by like 8 o'clock. So then you get to your third step six. It doesn't matter if you get there at 7 o'clock. But again, right. I got there at 11. And there was no line. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have the I think I went in the afternoon. There was no line. <laughs> exactly. So just, but I didn't know that going in. I think it's also different running in this selection versus the election that aligns with the presidential year in terms of number of people that are there so the right positions in the There are a lot less positions on the this year. So the, this is where most of the questions come. In general, is the expectations of the meetings. So should many of you know, we have a monthly meeting. Workshops like this. Uh, we have a curriculum workshop. We have a uh, budget workshop. We have uh, meetings with the staff in general before the workshops. So usually tonight we didn't because of the weather, but we started with a meeting at 6 30 uh, for a half an hour before the, before the workshops to meet with the staff, whoever wants to. There's committee work that goes with the timing, and I'll let everybody talk about the timing of their committees. Um, so I'll let John start with the financial advisory committee. And, and, and uh, it changes with over the years of how many times we meet, but generally we meet um, six times a year, so like every other month. And now we try to meet um, the Friday before the board meeting, because so that's a recent change. So as the board reorganizes, it's still going to change what those dates are and what the times are. Sometimes it's just to make up a little bit of time. It's like, because it'll be stale on Friday morning. I think we found this time it's better to have it on Fridays just to kind of review you know, if anything should be brought up in the board meeting. Um, kind of get a practice run through so that there's no surprises. Um, over the years, Doug, you were on it. Depending on if there's other projects going to financing, there's a lot of, a lot of financing books. Yeah, that was when I was first. I was a long time ago. But, uh, but before you were. Before I was on the board, right. But it comes and goes. Well, what I've seen in 10 years of being involved with the FPC is it comes and goes. Yeah. So there are times that are there's not much going on, and we took them down to quarterly meetings. Coming up or, or referendum, I would imagine you're going to have a lot more. There's talks about buildings or very specific to one fellow or an administrative center or something. You may have more there. Um, I think we, well, one time we spent talking about the reserve, the federal reserve fund. It just depends on what's going on. And there's other months where it's just really just, just, just an update. But that's every other. So all of these committees have two more. Board members, and generally over the years, have tried to stagger that so that your board members kind of are in different election cycles. It doesn't always work out that way, but you put one board member that's on your cycle so that you can always have some kind of like now, and it's me and Darren, and we're on, you know, I'm up, and he's not in the middle of this time. Right? It doesn't mean that the new board has to do it that way, but I've generally seen that. Try to rotate a little bit so you can have some experience when a new board member gets on there, and then you have some kind of. I've been on all. Well, I've been on legislative policy and finance. They're all a little different. Uh, different time requirements. 
I mean, I've never seen policy so busy as it is now because you guys are kind of taking every policy top to bottom. I think that's unusual and will probably change somewhat after after you get through that list. Yeah. Okay. Legislative is like really busy and then nothing. <laughs> I mean, just, it just depends. And, and for policy, in terms of time frame for that, um, we meet monthly during the school year. We don't meet in the summer. And uh, we've been meeting at 7 a.m. At, on Tuesdays, and it, it's happened a lot lately that we we're meeting at 7 a.m. after board meetings. So um, many times we've left at midnight, and I'll say to to, uh, to Elizabeth or, or Jill, I'll see in about six or seven hours, and uh, that that can be um, draining. But the meetings aren't terribly long. Like I, I'm, I think we usually out by 7:45, 8 o'clock. Was fun. Yeah, it was fun. The last one. The time with you, you two? Yes, two of us. Yeah. You might want to think about changing. Sure. Yeah, so it's not the day after the board. Change it yeah. to the following Tuesday. Yeah, okay. In policy and finance in general, in the morning, and one of the things is you do kind of have to live it at some point because most people are coming there before work. Mm -hmm. So right. you're going to start losing. Yeah, the we staff. have teachers on our. We have teachers on. We have staff. They got to get in the building. They got to get in the building. Mm -hmm. and we all get up for work. I'm legislative. I was on with Beth last year. Um, now I'm on policy and then education committee with Croc. Um, and I think, like you said, you're busy and then you're planning the legislative breakfast and then there's a snowstorm and then it gets canceled. So there was, <laughs> but that, yeah, <laughs> again, and I, there was more, that was the, you know, that was a, a busy political year. So what that also, I think, ebbs and flows with just whatever's going on. Um, just as a, as a, as a reminder though, for all the meetings, plus if you do have the 7 a.m. meetings. So I was, um, um, I am the primary parent who gets my child to work, uh, to school in the morning. Um, so just a heads up that that can be a problem. So if you are the primary person, you're gonna have to come up with something that works for you and your family, as well as we have been in closed session on a Monday night until midnight. Um, so if you have another person at home who also works evenings, which I do sometimes, you have to, I mean, it's kind of like you're doing exact hours, but there is some logistical challenges with that. Um, Cause you won't get home before they go to sleep. And if you need to make lunches and all of that stuff, and you need to be at work at 8.30 in the morning then just that's a big logistical thing at least for me because I am the primary person who does all of the child and I just have one so <laughs> for those of you that might have three and you are the main one best of luck to you <laughs> but that's a big thing for me at least yeah so those committees have two board members each um, and there's also the leadership so that was me where we were meeting a month before school now interest the, the team to have that a longer time frame and to not because we have so many faculty and staff and we're losing them we moved to an afternoon time but i mean again when we get the new board we might look and see um, most of us were on two committees not always but but a number of us were we actually just had a whole group of people that we to see more of. Um, but that that right now is meeting once the goal eventually, I think, is once a quarter. Once a quarter but right now, now it's in the beginning of the strategic process, you know, we're, we're meeting a little bit more frequently. Um, but I think the goal is to kind of have that be a kind of quarterly check in with all those sub, sub teams that have been built. Yeah. But, you know, the legislative committee was meeting in the morning and is not meeting in the afternoon. So, again, as the new board is in panel, then you can look at them and say, well, what time is that? You know, show that the legislative committee before I took my seat <clears throat> was a 7 a.m. meeting, but I do the morning drop offs for my kids, and so we moved it to 3:45. That happened to work for everybody else, and the flexibility is surely there. And Doug was super helpful in helping me think through which committees I can sit in on that will allow me to chair, but also take my take care of my family commitments. So that was a, a really good balance. Yeah, it's up to the new board too to decide who can be up for serve on them and you know where there are two people that can make a certain time to work so 
every time it seemed like there was a little bit of trouble in the summer along the way. Some committee might change from seven to after school. But generally, those are the two choices right after school, where people can make it or early in the morning. Um, also, uh, left off of the agenda that I have is SASED, which I serve on. So, um, it's another, that's the School Association for Special Education. Uh, Serving on that now for seven years. Uh, it's a wonderful organization that it's a co op that District 15 and surrounding districts in DuPage uh, are involved in. They each have a representative on the board. Some school districts, and this was set, I don't know when, a long time ago, have specifically superintendents on the board. Half, the other half have um, board members. In addition, so I serve on that. And in addition, they have another board, a governing board, they had to break it up into two boards, that meets probably once a quarter um, to approve the budget and to do approve the hiring of a superintendent, which we just did. So that won't probably be happening again, hopefully. So it's for budget approval purposes. Um, maybe that's every quarter, every six months, but the regular SAS meetings once a month. And that's at night. Um, and at seven o'clock in Naperville. So um, I think it's Naperville. They changed. I don't, is that still Naperville address? Yeah, it's, it's right on the line. It's on Ogden Avenue. Avenue. Right. Um, they just on the side of Pasadas. What's that? It's across from Pasadas. It is. Yeah, I always look for the big pizza <laughs> sign. <laughs> I don't know it's coming up. Uh, those meetings are not like a regular board meeting here. They're a little shorter. They generally run an hour or two, an hour and a half. Um, and then they have committees. So I've been on their financial advisory committee as well. So that's they meet that maybe once a quarter. So again, that SAS is a little bit more of a responsibility um, than maybe some of the committees, but I find it to be very rewarding. Um, uh, also the insurance committee. Yeah, the insurance committee. Health. Thank you. Formerly the insurance committee. Sorry. Um, and that is. Um, <laughs> I left you off. Mr. Chairs. I um, I'm the board's liaison to the insurance committee, the health and wellness committee, and that that meets approximately monthly for about an hour and a half. Thursday. Yeah, coming up this week. <laughs> and unlike mm -hmm. unlike policy and legislative uh, and so on, that is not an open meeting. That is just. Um, like a group of, of employees that need to, to speak about the, the health plan. And our position on there is just a liaison. Yeah, I don't have a board. It's not a board. It's not a board committee. Mm -hmm. I think Jill alluded to it, but the Education Foundation is another uh, service uh, where two of both Jill and I serve on. Uh, it meets monthly. It's the foundation for the schools that serves the school district. Um, and there's that's how I first got involved in the school district. It was a really helpful way to like see whether like how I could add value and how where I could um, be where I could learn more. Um, and so I served there for a year. Um, they run a number of programs, and as a board member, you can choose to volunteer at those programs. You can choose to chair any of those programs if you'd like. Uh, but it tends to be that the school board seats are non-voting seats and also non-chairing seats. And so when I wasn't in my seat here, I was uh, chairing a couple of the programs there. Um, but an a, uh, organization that's helpful to like get plugged into what's happening in the district and how that that organization supports programs that the uh, that they run for on behalf. Yeah, primarily the a, a not-for-profit fundraising group for District 58, and they do lots of outreach and networking and support. And there's also the lend. So that's more of a like being plugged into the legislative bodies of, of work. Um, and so that's an extension of my like, responsibility as the chair of the legislative committee. Right. And that meets every other month as well. So in general, think about the monthly meetings, the five curriculum or five uh, workshops of the year. Just the in general, two committees. So generally, where most people serve. Uh, I served on SAS at the FAC for the last year. Board president and just about every year. 
pixels on to uh, it's worth pointing out here so if it goes in this eyes wide open then your computation is exactly zero <laughs> <laughs> I've been asked that question a lot, and then I, I've even been asked at my at my, at my job, like, "Oh, so what's your last day here?" <laughs> I couldn't feed my family on this job. <laughs> a lot of work, but we it's get not, hydrated. Yeah, which is nice. Thank you. <laughs> there are cookies of the meat. Yeah. General, <laughs> general. <laughs> general. <laughs> right. Sometimes it's really hot. They're good. Really cold. Um, um, oh, and just the time to prep for meetings because we yes, get the, the updates. Um, from Carrie. Uh, uh, sometimes it's short, and sometimes it's long. Right, and then you know, <laughs> right. and there's, there's conversations and questions before. So we get weekly email uh, Fridays. You may have a question on the board members, you may have a question on the school. So, uh, in general, we try to get. So the administration, if they need to look up something or find something, um, they can find it in the webinars. Um, so, so the week before a board meeting, I generally have myself, and I'm sure others here too, have a lot of conversations with the board members about their something coming up or a topic or a big vote or whatever they're going to talk about um, or anything that might be unusual. But again, those are all one-on-one. -on -one. Conversations because we can't have one. Of them. There's a lot of so, I think Doug's probably feeling that a little bit more because he's president. He's reaching right. out and making sure that everyone's up to speed. And if they have questions, then he can feed those questions and he can touch with school as well. So it might be a little bit more. Probably. <laughs> right. Not to say that's that. That's fair to say. But that's not to say that anybody can be on any of those numbers. Uh, board responsibilities. This is something that when you get elected, you'll the IASB training is really key to point out. Uh, the board sets and monitors the uh, strategic plan. Um, we set and monitor the budget, uh, and we employ only one person. So the board only employs a superintendent. Uh, the board does not and should not get into. Um, specific employee issues. Uh, if there is something that comes up with a certain employee, we may hear about it in a closed session. Uh, and the superintendent may look to us uh, as a sounding board or for advice or to make sure we're in agreement, but those are not our employees. Uh, our employees only the superintendent. Uh, we set policies, uh, but we do not, the, the ISP will tell you, we are not here to get involved with the day-to-day -day running of the district. We are not here to look at the curriculum and decide if that's a good curriculum. We are here to make sure our one employee does, has best practices as committees in place does the work to come up, bring this in all the information, bring it up to a pyramid to us to give us the information and the backdrop of we wanted of what work has been done to come to that conclusion or come to that recommendation. So um, there, there's certainly, and I, and, and I didn't know this either until I started getting involved, but initially when I was talked to about getting involved with the school board, I thought was, I can add nothing to a curriculum discussion or uh, nothing to many things that have to do with the runnings of the district, but that's ultimately not, that's not what the board is here for. Uh, we're here to make sure the best practices are followed. Some of us have different strengths. Some of us uh, have more strengths in education, as uh, Greg does. Uh, some of us are more financial, have a financial background, as John does. Uh, we're all, we all have different strengths, and I think that's, that's great for a school board to have people with different backgrounds. Um, but we're, Again, we're, we're here to monitor our own employee and set policy uh, to make sure that 
sure of that. That's probably the same one. School board organization, we talked about this already a little bit. Uh, president, uh, the president, vice president, and then the committee chairs. Uh, each committee has a chair and then another member um, on that committee. Uh, my job or the president's job is to help set the agenda. So, and to funnel some information back and forth between the board members. Um, so, uh, Dr. Kremiscoli and I will have a have a meeting uh, before the board a week before the board meetings and go over the agenda. Um, this isn't a just my opinion, but other board members, if they want something on the agenda, they're encouraged to call either myself or Dr. Kremiscoli. Many times, it's easier to call me because we have a superintendent who's running the school district, and it's we find it to be easier that those questions get funneled through one person that can relay it. Have a meeting with her or chat with her once a week, it just saves a bunch of time and phone calls. Uh, doesn't have to go that way, but that saves her time. Um, uh, Elizabeth's the vice president, so obviously, does Elizabeth and I talk quite a bit? And if there's something that needs to be disseminated to the board members in between meetings, or we're taking questions or trying to build an agenda, uh, Elizabeth may call. Meetings we reviewed. Uh, we went over the staff meet and greets. Um, PTA meeting attendance and building tours. Uh, we also, those used to be a lot more regular. Uh, you want to refresh my memory on where we're currently so, at with that? So the board used to do uh, coffees with staff and then tours in the evenings and has tried a number of different ways of doing that at this point. Copies of the staff are a little bit difficult right before school starts for staff to actually engage in a conversation and then go run and pick up students and get started with the day. Um, building tours were really important when we were doing certain uh, facility projects. And so um, at this point, the board has scheduled out for this year PTA visits. And in conjunction with the PTA visits, they'll do um, tours at that time. And then the staff meet and greets have replaced the coffees. And so those happen in conjunction with the workshop meetings. Um, it's open and advertised to all staff across the district to come and have a have an individual conversation with a board member. Come and just visit. Um, there's there those um, have sometimes been well attended and other times not as well attended. But uh, the feedback we've gotten from the, the unions is that they appreciate having that opportunity to engage directly with the board. So. Copies were always well attended. The board members have a hard time getting to because yes, to work or catch a train or something. Yeah, the coffees were always really well attended. Found myself in the mall. <laughs> That's true. But they were well attended by teachers to you and Captain Williams. Yes. Most of the Meet and greets are, they've been sometimes well attended, sometimes not. And sometimes they come in with like a punch list of things they want to talk to you about. It's very specific. And other times it's been the exact opposite. They almost want to get to know you personally. Um, and kind of just generally get to know you. So both have been very, uh, you know, when I, when I first joined the board, it was nice to sort of put a human element to everybody. That was a big part of it. And then sometimes it's nice to know, like, all right, where, where is everybody? It's kind of temperature on everything right now. So it, so they've been very useful. Mm -hmm. And the, the PTA meetings were put on hold last year as we were trying all the different staff meet great options. They're back again starting Wednesday night. Staggered throughout the year, so I think the goal is that over a two-year period, every school would be visited, but it's been obviously not every school. Yeah. That was the same thing with the tours. Over a two-year period, we tried to get them all. Okay. And those are something we try to get two more members. We also just started uh, quarterly meetings. Two board members will rotate. Uh, Greg and I was the first one um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, uh, 
or will meet with some members of the, with the administration, with Dr. Trevisoli, a few members of her team, and the GPA. So that is a um, quarterly meeting that we rotate, will rotate. Greg and I went to the first one, two more will go to the next one, and every quarter. So that we can, different board members can hear from the GPA and back to those meetings and share that information with Doug, you've been meeting monthly with the president of the DGE, or roughly monthly, but the intent is right. monthly, correct? Right. Greg Young is the president of the DGA. Um, is everyone else in the meeting? Right. Uh, what is that, your second or third meeting? Yeah, uh, we did it meeting. twice. We started with just phone calls, trying to do it monthly, and to be quite honest, they Busy, I'm busy, right? Sort of fall through. We really wanted to make sure we spoke ideally sometime between the meetings every month. Just curious, the, the goal of that is to. The goal of that, from the board's perspective, right. I think the board, the goal is to hear from the policy leaders. Do you ever feel like your hands are tied as a board member? Because, like you said before, that your your goal really isn't here to, um, you know, like feedback with curriculum or anything like that. It's more to regulate, make sure that the superintendent is, is doing the what's best for me. Do you ever feel like uh, it's hard to do that? To kind of meet with that kind of like I said, you're trying to get the pulse, but you directly can't really, I guess, affect some of that. You know what I mean? I think he knows or they know what the role of the board is right. as well. They should. And they haven't asked me for anything or input or anything on any of that I could provide or help. So it's more of just a communication by we want to make sure that we're on the same page so things don't pop up. Right. right. But I think you're speaking to, and I think that's something that we'll talk about when we get to the the accomplishment of the challenge, that that's one of the primary challenges of being a board member versus being elected to some of these other positions is that you're elected as a member of the board and not as an individual legislator, for instance. So there, there's very little that an individual board member can, can do alone. I mean, almost everything is, I can listen and I can hear, but then we, we can only make decisions as, as a group together. Um, and and that, that's certainly something that's hard to adjust to, certainly coming from my background. And I'll provide you a little bit of an anecdote because I know you're in education um, and uh, I am as well. And I, I, my superintendent told me a story once about a board member who um, got elected with an extra grind and wanted to see some, some, make some changes. And his, his comment to her eventually, after some months of, of conflict between the two of them, was get three more votes and then we'll talk. Because there's nothing that she can do without without four, me four, four members supporting whatever initiative she wants, initiative she wants to push forward. So I mean, like, like you said, at this point, it is kind of, um, I don't know if frustrating is the right word, but you know, you see your limitations as I'm one person on the board of seven. Um, we're not going to get together and talk about things between meetings. Everything's done in public, so um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit hard to to um, put in your own initiative, to get things done. That's so everybody. It's the biggest misunderstanding that comes to the board. The general public doesn't understand that school boards are a governing body. We have no legislative authority. Um, I think of even the village council. They can they can set um, parking. They can set traffic violations. They can set ordinances. They can, we don't have like that ability to do stuff like that. We, the it's really an oversight and a governing body. That's what the statute. That's what the constitution of Illinois set them up. Right. And a lot of the training too that you go to definitely provides you with that that framework too. That that's basically what you you're kind of like here like you know in an auditorium right you're in we're kind of on this the seats up here right as far as like monitoring but as far as like behind the stage i mean yes to a certain extent but really you're you're up there kind of yeah, you're supposed right. to try to oversee it. right i mean it was originally set up to monitor tax dollars and then you really start chasing this backwards to get taxing bodies to form public education maintenance 
been, in some of that's been stripped away. A lot of it's been stripped away over the decades. And, um, for the fact that we may vote on the tax levy, but quite frankly, it's kind of handed to you because it's CPI. I mean, you can always make it less, you can't make more. So, I mean, before PTA, you, you, know, you sit there and say, okay, what do we want the levy to be? And you can set it within statutory rights. But now it's like, okay, what's CPI? All right, it's kind of what it is. You can go less, you just can't go more. I would add, though, that the board, as a collective unit, does set the direction for the district, and then Policies. it's our administrative um, responsibility then to determine the how. Um, so the why is really set by the board, uh, or the what is set by the board, and we have to determine how to do that, and then they evaluate us, me in particular, on whether or not that's being accomplished, and, and then reset um, those goals, and, and kind of that high overarching vision. And I think right now, with the strategic plan, we have a lot of really clear direction that has been set, and, and then we, um, myself and my team, really help to define how we're going to accomplish that. It policy say I'm not saying we don't have you, you have it's perfect you have if you can convince three other people to go in this direction you know then you can make course for changes or whatever but this the biggest thing is we've all seen this many places you, you know, just because you're the loudest doesn't mean you get more votes right so you know, I've always thought that no matter what it is you vote and then you go forward from Look, we voted, we're done, we're done, okay. That's a fair point. The IESB will define training that all over and over and over. Right. The board That's speaks great. with one voice. One voice. Uh, so once the vote is done, that's it. The board is spoke and you move on and you go to the next one. So the young, uh, if you like, the losing end of the road or the wrong end of the road, and, and the majority votes one way, and that's it. Everybody's had, everybody's had to swallow their pride a little bit at some point and go, okay, well, that's it. I lost. I was outvoted. And we don't always have unanimous decisions. It surprises me. Oh, you're always voting unanimously. That's not true. We get a quite a few votes. So, and I have, but I haven't seen board members go, well, I'm not going to support that decision. Yeah, I think sometimes there's been compromise that got to a point. Like maybe people were, like at some point you're compromising to get to the point you kind of go, all right. Some of what I want is in there, and some of what, and then so by the time we come down to the vote, there's been some compromise uh, kind of built into that. And um, two pieces, yeah. They're, they're, when you go to your IASB training, they're going to talk a lot about governance versus legislative. And there's a lot of people that walk in the room that don't realize that, like you serve a single constituency, so it's really important that you, you speak with one voice at the end, even if you're debating it and that debate gets intense during that. But at the end, if it's a five-two vote, then the board has spoken and it's important to let that go. I we just had a conference uh, that the IESB put on and, and they were talking about it. They were showing these stats and one of the stats they, they were talking about was boards that are in turmoil, you see a diminish in, um, in the performance in the schools um, because the focus ends up becoming on what's going on in the board and that distracts the administration and everything else like that. So it's really important that that we keep ourselves in, in working order, even if we don't always agree. But that's a really, really important piece to, to what we do. And we don't always agree, but um, one thing that I've liked since I've been on this board, because I'm consulting, I've worked with a lot of different organizations, is that um, there's always been a lot of respect for, for differences of opinion. And at some point, um, we've all had to kind of do something where like, yeah, I wish I had a little bit more of this, or I wish it went that way instead. But but in the end, I think it's Right. So. And I'm going to say, like, sort of into the accomplishments and challenges, because we've talked a lot about a little bit of the challenges, and, and there are challenges. And the biggest challenge for me, and what I wasn't expecting, is just how long it takes to make the right decision. So we it can go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth before you get to a vote. We might be talking about something for months. And, and, and so that can mean it takes a while to change direction. The district guy, John, you always use the shared oh. steering ship, which I respect. Especially my side in uniform, I should say, but that's awesome. Oh, I can't believe um, I missed that. It was pretty awesome. But 
In terms of accomplishments, though, even though it takes a really long time, in two years, you start to feel like you start to really see the changes happen, right? You see a new strategic plan get adopted and all of the input that went into that. I mean, that was all. And then, so you see the whole direction the district then start to change. So not to say that there are challenges, but it, but it doesn't mean it's not redundant. Right? There, there are lots of things that you will get done that, that you feel good about, right? It took a long time to figure out what the right ELA curriculum was. But the value of that is that's getting adopted and seeing that in the kids' hands and seeing the value that that's bringing to them is huge, right? And, and then so the, the, even though the challenge was it's not immediate, right? The, the accomplishment is that you, you really do start to see those results happen for the kids. That's why I spoke first, but everybody gets to go around the room. Depending on where you work and what your career is, and I think not coming from a governmental background, I, mean, I, I remember you know, the Navy took forever to change things, but you know, you kind of sometimes just did it, right? Yes, sir, right? But where I work now, I was like, okay, well, I want to do this, this, and this, and then three or four of us get up and decide this is the direction of the company. I want to go that way. It doesn't work that way here. And it's very hard for the community sometimes to understand that. It's like, yeah, I'd like to do that, but Union has a say in that too. They don't want to do it. The, the legislature has a say in that too. We don't necessarily want to have that curriculum, but we may have to. We don't want to spend money on that, but we may have to. I always try to steer parents back to the, the like the, the chain of command, for lack of a better word. Sometimes you, I know parents get frustrated. I'll say, Have you talked to the principal? Have you talked to your teacher? Have you talked to the principal? Have you talked to the superintendent? And if I get a no to any one of those, I usually kind of stop there and say, start with your teacher. That your primary means of communication for anybody in this district should be your, your teacher. Then you're probably the principal. And then the central administration. And if all else fails, then the board. But I, it, we, you get a lot of parents get frustrated. They'll come straight to you and say, well, this teacher's been I don't know. Start with the people that actually supervise that person. I want to know what's going on with my kid. I don't ask Doug. Well, <laughs> Unless he's hanging around with his son. You could. I can't. Yeah, hang around. Yeah, our kids. Friends. But, uh, you know, I usually don't ask Carrie how's my son doing in school. I usually ask the teacher first, right? But uh, that, that's, that's tough. Some parents think that you know, if they have a problem with the teacher, you can go in and solve it. It doesn't work that way. So the challenges are, are parents or? No, it's not. I've, I've been hearing a lot of it. Is it? Is it I mean, I'm just curious, as far no, as someone who's interested in doing this, do, I, yeah, do, you get, do you get a lot of those emails, or does it take up a lot of your time? Or? I have found the longer you're on the board, the less you can have a school function without getting sidetracked. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, my wife's always like, man, every time you go to a school function, all you talk about is like school work stuff. And it's like, man, yeah, that's just kind of the way it is. Or, um, it, I, I don't mind you know, talking about things, but it, maybe not a challenge or frustration. I mean, those aren't the right words. It's just a misunderstanding to try to understand what your role is, because I can find myself sometimes going down that path. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I got too far down with this. You need to talk to right the role and how, how it actually works. Like yeah, you need to. Work. You know, you're having a you have a medical issue with your student. You definitely shouldn't be talking to me about it because I can't. Help you. Um, I'm I'm glad as a parent. Uh, if, if Whittier or Herrick or North or to talk to you about stuff because I have parent things, but sometimes I think people that they confuse that when you're talking to them about your kids and stuff. That, oh, you, well, you're a board member. Why can't you change that? Gotcha. You, know, you just got to remember your role that you are in the community, you're involved in the community, you should be involved in your school and the PTA. But then you got to put your board hand on sometimes too. So it's you know, like, it's like, oh, it, like. You get a bunch of emails, and then you won't get emails, and you get a bunch of emails, and you try to divvy it up. Sometimes it doesn't do good. Everybody responding to it. Sometimes I'll call Doug and say, Doug, you got an answer for this? Or, you just got to know where to point people. That's the hardest part: is to, to make sure you point them in the right direction and not accidentally point them in the wrong direction, because then they're really frustrated. And it's like, well, you were helping me, and now you're not talking to me. I can see that. Right. Do you have the biggest accomplishment? Accomplishment. I always say it was hiring Carrie. <laughs> I mean, that's what we, we you know, we, you hire the superintendent. That's really the only thing you can, 
and as a board, you can take full credit for because that's what you do. Everything else that the district does is a collective effort. Right? I'm proud that the district uh, does does well on um, educating students. I mean, that's the biggest accomplishment. Is that I think District 58 from a, a dollar per education per outcome, however you want to look at it, does very well. Um, we have a model that's kind of unique. We have a lot of schools for the number of students we have. I don't think there's too many districts that have this many schools. You can make the real 204 has as many schools, but they have like three times as many students. They just have values kind of the same way. You know, I'm just trying to use examples around here. They have about the same amount of buildings, but they have multiples of, of students. So, you know, people, I don't think appreciate that, but that what that gets you it gets you a little bit more community but it also takes away some opportunities i think the accomplishment is overall we have a good education i've had two kids that have made it all the way through district 58 uh, one still in 58 and uh, all have had different experiences been at different levels and all have been successful and when i say different experiences every kid should have a different experience because every kid's different I think what's actually that, that that is probably one of the biggest accomplishments. I think since I've been on the board, we used to every kid was treated like you're in fifth grade, here's your box, we got you in the box, we picked up the package and moved it into sixth grade. Now you have kids in fifth grade taking sixth grade math, they're accelerated, but maybe they're not accelerated and all that. It used to be you were either gifted or you weren't, or you needed help. Now it's like it, it, that has changed in the last ten years where kids can perform at a level in a subject that they're at. And you don't have to be gifted to be accelerated. You know, and there are a lot of kids, my kids have all been really good at one subject and maybe you had a harder time in another subject. And that, that I think helps a lot. It creates challenges though. I'm not saying that that doesn't create challenges on staff. I think as a grade school district, it creates a challenge because you hit an end, right? You hit that eighth grade, now what do you do? You have to have a really good relationship with them. I don't think we do. How about you? Oh, all right. a while now. Let's go with Darren. Darren next. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think when um, when I decided to run for the board, I think it was, the challenge I was hearing is people were just unaware of some of the stuff that's going on. I think there's some communication challenges. And I think we've, we've really, really engaged well with the community building that strategic plan. I, I was really excited, even though I wasn't on the meet and confer, I was really excited by, by the way that process went. And uh, when I came in and the stuff that I was hearing really sort of came through in that, in that strategic plan. And out of that, around the same time, we, we sort of changed that model by which we, we measure the superintendent role that I think ties together with our goals as a district that I think is going to make us better accountable for the, the future as opposed to having like a static set of goals that, that we have uh, for the position and, and something that's written into a contract. I think we have that moving target that we're always trying to hit and we're communicating that with the community and we're, you know, we're setting public goals. I'm, I'm really excited for where that, uh, that strategic plan is going to take us. I think. A real focus on a real focus on learning, a focus on communication, and then overall, just looking at what's going on in our facilities as a whole. You brought it up. If you look at other districts, we have 13 buildings. The newest building was built in the 60s. Uh, there's a lot of challenges here that you know a lot of people don't realize, and I think that's why communicating is really important. It's hard to maintain consistency and and offer everything that you want to offer when you've got a bunch of small buildings um, spread out. So how do you how do you maximize what we offer our, our kids to really get the most amount of growth? And I, I really am seeing a lot of people watching Justin work and take that into account, like how do we offer things? So you got a kid who really excels in math. Uh, my daughter's got a kid in her class and that kid just loves math and, and you know, he, he's two grades up and, and, and stuff that he's working on and the way that they can work with him without it really separating them out. Like he gets to stay with his, his second grade peers. I think Um, I still feel like there's too, there's still too much to learn, I think, uh, uh, but I think for me, um, like Darren said, 
when we ran, there seemed to be a lot of, um, and I think that was just societal, but a lot of eh. Um, and I do feel like since I've been here, the board has created an atmosphere for people to feel safe to come and speak their mind. And I think that sometimes that's just as powerful as getting something to change because in lots of places you can't do that. Um, and that all fits in kind of with my background as a therapist and everything. And I think that there's a big value in that um, and giving them that those, creating those opportunities within all of the committees then for those that want to see or be a little more hands-on with that. Um, and that has certainly changed just in that last year and a half um, that we've been on the board. Um, and just excited with, I think there's going to be lots of concrete plans um, and dates and things like that set in this strategic plan that moving forward are gonna make a big difference um, in getting us, like you said, not having the original bathrooms in the kindergarten room at her mom that I used in 1975, which is still in the kindergarten room at Fairmount. Ah, one of them doesn't. It. It's the same toilet, it's the same sinks, it's the same. And there's a smell that brings me right back to 1975. <laughs> that even my daughter got to share, but I'm excited that there, we are going to have plans to get our, um, our kids and future kids um, up to par with how they should have a building and the facilities. Um, I've only been on this in my seat for about five months. Uh, and I, was, uh, it's a, uh, I got really good advice coming in. So I'll share that uh, talking one-on-one -on -one with existing board members was super helpful. Uh, it uh, assuaged a lot of the, what could have been challenges in terms of time commitment. I knew what I was getting into. I, I really use my time to, and the district has been great about this, of giving me an opportunity just to learn and become familiar with what's what's making the district tick. Um, I've made the ask to go visit school buildings, and I've had the chance to go see up close and personal technology in action, up close and personal teachers in action, up close and personal principals in action. Um, and I expect to do more and more of that because uh, I really like first-hand experience. Um, as much as we get second and third-hand information, uh, which is just natural from being on the board, uh, I really like to supplement that with first-hand experience and information. And so um, the opportunity to learn is real. The opportunity to learn, I think, is a privilege, and we should take advantage of it. Um, we, as a board, get to go into any building at any time uh, and are welcome with open arms. And I've taken advantage of that. And that's, that's uh, uh, I'm lucky in my job to be able to have that flexibility, and I, I know that, and so I knew that stepping into the seat, uh, I wanted to do it, and I wanted to do it in the way that my rest of my life allowed me to commit the time to do. Um, so that, that's been, I think, the plus. Uh, I got really good advice from Beth and a few others before I joined of uh, the time commitment. So we, I think at the beginning of this, we listed all the different ways your time is gonna be drawn on, and those are all very real. Um, I would say every week, if at minimum every other week, there is at least a couple hour commitment that I'm making to school board related activities. Um, and I think the idea of a monthly meeting, uh, the monthly meeting is a disguise of it's a one, you know, it's a few hours every month. That's just not the reality. Um, but I got really good advice coming in that that was going to be the case. And um, my wife and I had a really honest conversation about what I wanted to do and whether our family could handle it. And I'm lucky enough that my, my, my wife is a rock star and is able to you know, step in when, when I'm out for extended hours in the evening with bedtime routines for a four and one year old. Um, and so I'm very lucky from that perspective, but just knowing going in that was the case, we were able to have very real conversations at home before that ever became an issue. Um, and so uh, I think that probably is like one challenge to be aware of. Uh, the other challenge is I come from now I'm in the nonprofit education space, but before that I was in the private sector education space, and both of those spaces, I feel like I'm able to, in some ways, make unilateral decisions or small community decisions and start moving. And so this the ship analogy I hadn't heard before, but it's very real and just resonates a ton on there's a reason why the system is set up this way, and we have to appreciate that. Um, it's very disruptive for teachers and for students in particular to make significant shifts every time a 
three per, a seven person board has half their seats changed. Um, and the fact that that happens every two years for an administration, for a teaching staff, for uh, students in their seats uh, that will be with us for eight, uh, for nine years, um, that much change, as much as we have good intentions, probably, just not right for those kids and for that staff. And so I think the pace at which we move makes a lot of sense. Um, and a part of my role right now in being in month five is just getting comfortable with that and knowing that there's a good for why we move the pace we move. Um, knowing where, where the right places are to make impact and have change. Um, so I'm, I'm extremely passionate about being on the board. So I, I, when I talk about my challenges, I don't want to feel like I'm, I'm complaining or anything like that because I really enjoy the work and I'm really glad to be on it. I'm also, um, I don't want to, I'm glad that I'm not running in the spring because no one can say that I'm trying to scare anybody away from running against me. Um, but it is, the, the time commitment, the time commitment, first of all, is real. Um, it's not like, I'm just telling you about my week a couple weeks ago. On Monday, we had an insurance committee meeting, health performance committee meeting, <laughs> from 3.30. And I, ha I had to leave it at like 5 because I had to pick up my son to get home and have dinner to come back from work being at 7. And then we had the 7 a.m. policy committee meeting on Tuesday. Uh, then I took a day off from board stuff. On, and on Thursday, Doug and I met with the teachers union um, from 4 to 5.30. Um, and then on Friday, and this is annual, but like on Friday, Jared and I went downtown for an all day conference on Friday and Saturday. So, I mean, that was probably, that was a, an extreme example of, of the commitment. But, um, you know, typically you're going to have weeks when you're asking a lot of your kids and your, and your spouses um, in, in terms of just being able to get away and being able to find balance. Um, it is, um, again, very rewarding work. But the challenge is we've had some, some meetings where you just go home and you can't sleep afterwards. And um, you, can't, you, can't think, you can't think about anything else for a couple of days. I mean, I, I don't know how many of you attended um, the June meeting well, when the teachers union was there um, in large numbers and we worked on technology. Um, and I think people um, in the community, again, there's that misunderstanding of what the role of the board is. The board's not elected. The board's elected for their judgment. I think more, more than anything else. Uh, that's important to you if you're concerned about running is, is um, you want to persuade the community that you have good judgment because um, you're not elected to be a weather man. You're not elected to, to listen to the crowd and, and, and do whatever they say. Um, so when there are when there's a lot, large group of teachers who are trying to, um, I don't want to, I'm trying to convince you to make, to, to make, to agree to something that's going to benefit them in terms of salary or insurance. Um, you have to um, do what's right for the citizens, for the kids, and yes, the teachers, but you have a lot of other people who are um, you answer to. So, um, you know, you, if, you, if you're lucky enough to, to win a seat on the board, it's going to be great, and, and it's going to be awesome, and you're, gonna, you're, you're really going to enjoy it, but um, the, the community support is not always going to be there because you're going you're gonna to have to do things that are going to um, Upset people. And that's just that's just part of the role. So just you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's it's bad or awful. I don't get my house egged or nobody boos me when I'm at the supermarket. But I mean, it's it's you know, it, there's just there's always like a, a burden that you carry with you after after meeting, and it, it's just it kind of takes a toll. Um, in terms of successes, um, you know, I, I think that we don't we don't celebrate this enough. I think we should. Um, it's, it's our it's our what what happened with um, our tiers for the our school performance with ESSA um, having eleven. Um, exemplary buildings and two condo buildings. I think that's outstanding. I think that um, you know when you consider the fact that in, in the summer our buildings are rated as um, 11, 10, 12 commendable and one underperforming, and that was before they factored in growth. So when you when you factor in the full um, accountability measures, we, we leaped to almost all exemplary, and that just tells you that this community is, um, our school district is, is it, it's a really good, good place to send your kids because we are going to grow your kids. And I can't take credit for that as a board member, the board can't, it was a, that was a combination of efforts between the superintendent and the administrators and the teachers and the parents and the kids and the entire community to um, you know, have a really great year with Park compared to um, some of the years we've had previously. All I can, all I can, so my kids even take the Park last year because they were, she was in first grade. Um, and I didn't have, and my kindergarten was in the district yet. So um, I can't take any credit for that personally, but um, you know, I came in and, and some of the other board, board members, we said that we 
want to change kind of our reputation that, that is derived from park. And, and I think we made, we made some really great strides in the last year. And I think that's, a, that's an awesome accomplishment that I'm really proud of being a small part of. It's a really good example of where the board sets that direction and then we collectively kind of figure out the how. How will we accomplish that? But the direct direction was very clear from the board as a whole. This, this needs more focus. We need to shift how we're approaching this. And then we have to figure out the how. Um, yeah, which means sort of sum up easily and then just keep moving. Um, whatever the topic may be, my newly elected board member, we had to hire a new superintendent. Um, then I think, you know, I was, my wife was going to kill me after I joined the board. And we, uh, <laughs> All these extra meetings for interviews and everything else. It wasn't what we thought I was signing up for. It was just one meeting. Um, uh, but there's always, whether it's a superintendent or a change in administrator or curriculum with Mr. Sissel or uh, building new curriculum or the strategic plan, whatever it is, like this group of people are not only here, but the prior ones, everyone treated each other with respect and worked together, and we all had the same, you know, goal of doing what's right for the district. And I think along that point, one thing to point out is, is doing what's right for the district isn't always doing what's right for the parents of the children or anything financial or anything with certain groups because we represent the entire community we represent people who don't come to the meetings we represent people who don't have kids they don't have kids they pay their taxes so we <laughs> right. that's so important that's to remember important. and it's hard to fight through you know some of the noise sometimes of determining is that a vocal minority or is that something that is a real issue and a real concern that needs to be tackled. That's something that you always have to have in your mind. Um, because we represent you know, all these houses of people that don't even know we're having a board meeting that night. But they're paying taxes and they don't have kids, but we still need to be good stewards of the money that we have. And also, whether they know it or not, we need to have a good education foundation kids for our community so that our community remains valuable and a desirable place to be so and that benefits them whether they know it or think about it or not um, so um, one other quick point uh, you brought up two other quick points just to that I wrote down what's going on you brought up the IAS people always say they say the balcony of the dance floor there you go. Yeah, so it's the, uh, you'll hear it in. Yeah, you'll hear it all the time. That's it. Wow, it's close. Right. You were right there. You were right there. You were right there. So more on the balcony and looking down the dance floor. Right. Not you're on, that's why you're on the board. No, I'm not. That's why you're on the board. It'll get beaten into your head. That's why you're there. Uh, and one, and the last thing was, there's a, there's a few things when you get, you get elected that don't quit right away because you'll or, that people lied to you, but there are a few extra things at the end of the year that we didn't talk about here. Going to the graduations oh, or the promotions, I'm sorry, is the highlight of my year every year. Uh, you get to go see all the kids and shake hands and handle some diplomas, and that's 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 just fantastic. Um, Teacher award. Uh, Bring hand sanitizer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad advice. Uh, and uh, there's a retirement lunch as well that we have for the retiring people in the district. Uh, select 58. There's select 58. So there's there's probably four or five things at the end of the year that you don't have to go to all of them, but I try to make the guts of them, and everybody here tries to make the, the majority of them. So that's all of that is right at the end of the year so it's sort of big you get, you get elected you get put on the board and then you got all this extra stuff and then summer and, and then, then summer. sort of <laughs> so with that
that. I guess we'll open it up to any questions if anybody has any. That's, but that's a lot, but if you have anything, I'll also offer, if you have to think of something later, call me, uh, email me, or and we can set a time to have a conversation about anything else that you know, you'd like. Does Liv want to go? Oh, I thought I started. Yes, yeah, she can. Oh, I, I mean, I first. <laughs> Sorry, I thought John did. No, I started and then I threw it to John and then we went around. Yeah. I kind of went through. So, a note um, so former board secretary, her name was Pam, ran into my wife like right after I got elected. And she said, You know, Laura, I want to thank you for your time. She goes, I'm not doing anything. She goes, Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't know it yet. She just didn't know it yet. And, um, but uh, so that, that is really, it's really nice to have um, you know, the support of your family. And um, she kind of knew what she was getting into. And, um, still supportive of it but like it is it's a lot and, but um, just to tell you a, a quick anecdote here though uh, people ask her all the time they're like so how does Darren like being on the board she goes, he's the only one I know that's excited to get like work email on a Friday night and just <laughs> open it up and look at it like he must be liking it right so um, uh, you know just kind of give you an idea it's, it's a lot but but it's uh, it's incredible and it's nice that we have like you said when in the past when there has been one or two board members that come into battle um, I can't even like it's nice to come in and see everyone again even if we're not on the same page of writing but I and I can't imagine what that is like when there is a, such a split and a divide and um, you know going in with that idea of working together for the kids and keeping figuring out our differences versus um, going into Thunderdome um, works is a lot better use of energy um, and time that none of us have extra of and so and then the outcome is always better that is perfect. I have never seen an elected official that ran specifically yeah be successful the, the worst board members the worst council members, the worst governor, whatever. If they're mad and the only reason you're running is because you're mad about something, step back and don't run. Because you you want to seven make you and you're just, you're just yeah, you get angry and then you know, we, I, 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 I've been there when I first got on the board. Man, it was a constant head for me. It was like, oh, and I'm not one I'm not saying from experience. I just <laughs> imagine that if there was a board member on this current board who was mad, um this, this, the others should probably isolate that person, and then even if they had a good idea, that's we're exactly not, we're not gonna that's exactly what happens. Are you trying to say that someone's mad here? No, 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 so it has to change your social media. It has yeah. to change your, Actually, that's been what nice. you wear to go to the <laughs> target during the school day. It Not will change up. a lot of different things. I've never had anything but wonderful relationships with all of my kids' teachers since I've been on the board. But there is no doubt that they, they know who I am. Um, and, and into it, it does affect everything about your life. And just to know that going in, it, it does you're like me. I love connecting people to other people. And the fact that I know who everybody is and I know who to connect with, which makes me so happy. Isn't that? I find it incredibly great when someone comes up to me at Target and says, I have a question about this, and I can send them all to Justin. But, <laughs> but, but you were always that person. Now you know. When you, go, when you go to the McDonald's in Lyle and you think that you're at the McDonald's in Lyle, there's someone there who still knows you from a board meeting yeah. and is going to want to come up to you. and. Or it's just watching. Or it's just, and, and so it changes everything. So it's great, and it's, it's not great. And your kids that are also all the time. I don't swear as much out. As <laughs> my favorite story that. is when I was first elected to the board, and my son was at a playground, and met Dr. Carmen Foley's daughter at a playground, and they had a whole conversation about, our parents work together now. <laughs> 
Because they, and, and in the eyes of like little kids. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Miles probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were actually arguing over whose mom is in charge. Let's open it up. Anyway, questions. It's a lot, so feel free to reach out. No, but I thank you all for your time. Thanks for coming. It's great. Honestly, I appreciate your candor and your honesty. Uh, appreciate your just informing us about it. Yes. So, so, so you can reach out to any of us. Unfortunately, it's too late for my most important piece of advice, and that is get your signatures before it gets cold outside. But, <laughs> but, but this episode, because I learned really that the nice hard way. Week. Is it going to be nice? Yeah. No, it was. Oh, oh this past one, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not so nice right now. I don't remember being in a place with a lot of people. Yeah. I went to church. <laughs> One school. Yeah. Well, it's still a meeting, so we do need a motion oh. to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> you got that? Got it. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion is adjourned. The meeting is adjourned at uh, 9 04.